fact, not with Alice Cooper, and reading about the things that I said you have done on stage in your lifetime, those sound bizarre to old Tom. You know, Tom sits here with a glass of water and talks to people, and that's kind of the I act. I see some bizarre shows on this. What, what <laughs> the here? Sterling Hayden show was bizarre. You thought bizarre? Yes, I thought so. Oh, bizarre of the mind, yes. though, not bizarre of the physicality. What is the strangest or weirdest illusion or effect uh, that you've ever done on stage? Well, uh, that's hard to say because a lot of things are, are imagined by the audience. Um, it's like a surrealist, a surrealistic kind of approach. Well, did, uh, there was a story, remember, when you killed the chicken, but you really didn't kill the chicken. Well, you know, it, there's 90% of, of my whole thing is, is, is you know, the legend is uh, rumors. I just decided not to deny any of them, you know, because some of them are very creative. <laughs> and yeah, but tell me you didn't kill the chicken. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Sanders kills chickens, I mean, you know. <laughs> uh, no, I, it was... Um, I don't really remember. Alice might have done that, but you know, I, I don't think I did. <laughs> the thing, the thing about that is, what, what is, is Alice somebody else? Oh yeah, well Alice, you know, is, is the the character that performs really, you know, and um, and then who are you? Oh, I'm just you know, Ozzy Nelson, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I just I just sit around being very very normal, you know. Uh -huh. But then that that promotes the the character, that promotes the character. The more normal I get in my regular life, the more bizarre Alice gets. And so, like, they feed off each other. Now, what about the time Alice had his head chopped off? Oh, yeah, that was fun. I think we have My some, mom hated that one. I think we have some videotape, and maybe we can roll that, and uh, you, people can watch it. And uh, I don't know if you want to give away the illusion here as to what happened. No, or... I, I died every night. It was... Oh. Was <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, here it goes. you got to be kidding. you got to be real. kidding. Bye, Alice. They love me, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> My kids. All, all the parents went, yeah! <laughs> I mean, you gotta kind of feel for a second like if they're cheering the blade coming I down, know, what I do know. they think of me for it? Well, well, the thing is, is like, Alice is like a catharsis up there, you know? He's like, uh, there's, we have very few fights in our audience. You know, because it's like after you saw Clockwork Orange. Nobody wanted to go out and fight after that because they did it for you on the, on the, on the film. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we, we use violence. Because it's sensationalism, and I love sensationalism. You know, I think that that's, that's the whole basis of my show. I would much rather pick up uh, a, mag a magazine, I won't name with magazine, that says, Boy Born with Dog's Head, rather than, you know, Reagan does it, da da da, you know, because that's more sensational, you know. Uh, more people would go to an airplane wreck than a circus, just because that's the way that, that uh, human nature is, you know. And so, like, what I do is I just give them images. I throw images. There's a snake out. If I throw the snake out there and bring yeah, it out no, there, you will, you'll take it sexually, maybe. She'll take it funny. She'll take it serious. So that's one. If I throw a crutch out there, they'll t by the end of the show, you have 20 different images. You'll walk away with a whole different story than she will. Mm -hmm. So I'm making you use your imagination. Uh, they told me backstage, the uh, producers, that you wanted to come out here with a snake tonight. Yes, I did. And don't, I, don't I, move. I get a little... <laughs> Excuse me. I get a little uneasy around snakes, which is stupid, I know. It's no, a they're, dumb they're, thing to they're do. really nice. If you, you know, you feed them. We feed this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like you know, people, two or three yeah. groupies a week, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one, this one is really, I mean, she's no stage. A Angel, her name is Angel. You know, she, she lives in Beverly Hills now. You know? And uh, she won't eat rats. She's mink. You know, she's, I don't know, rats. What's rats? And she knows, she actually knows when she's on stage. You bring her out there and she, her ego comes out. And it's just, oh, yeah. I'm the do snake. you think all the people that go to watch you perform uh, in the spectacular stage shows that you do, have the foggiest notion that you, Alice Cooper, live in a house in Beverly Hills, California, next door to Barry Goldwater Jr., and are a very quiet, meek, mild-mannered singer with a major metropolitan newspaper. I'm, I'm a model citizen. <laughs> no, they, they, the thing is, is again, I love the idea of playing the two images against each other because people still don't have any idea. You know, why did I go on Hollywood Squares? You know, I mean, well, why did you? Well, think of it. Because the, the same lady that's winning a car won't let her kids go to my show. You know, and I thought that was a really bizarre sort of, uh, you know, just putting me into that, to that thing, plugging me in was a really pop art kind of statement, you know. Uh, you know you're a legend when you're a question on Gambit, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you sit there, I'm sitting there in the morning watching, I like, I love quiz shows, and, you know, because I know I'm smarter than those people. And I sit there and I watch, and I'm watching them, and they said, who is Vincent Fernier? You know, who is Alice, Alice Cooper? Cooper right. you know, there, Whatever. The lady knows. But she's Whatever you know. happened to good old Vince Fernier back there on the trail? What, what happened to him? Oh, he's still around. Yeah. You know? He was pretty. 
he was fun and everything like that. I, you know, I, I'm still Vince a lot of times. Vince. I look like Vince to you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vince. No, I was always a... But Alice, the character Alice was needed. He's a real need because the stage needs to be used. And it, it needs to be... Uh, uh, take you know they say called it gimmicks that was a bad word he used to say oh alice is gimmicks mm -hmm. and that well sure what's wrong with gimmicks as long as the music backs it up if it were just gimmicks with no music then it would just be a, you know a farce you know anybody can go out and buy buy props so that's 13 foot cyclops but if you haven't got the music to back it why it's there you know then, then it's you know there's a quote attributed to frank zappa way back there on the trail somewhere when you were playing a small place in los angeles early on in your career every place in los angeles uh, where apparently the customers left. Oh, yeah. And Zappa said any band that can empty out a club that fast <laughs> yeah. must have something going for it. Even so the hippies what, hated it. Yeah, was, was that a true quote, though? <laughs> oh, sure. Well, that was a true fact. It was a hip thing to do, like, in about 1969, to walk out on Alice Cooper. You know, we used to play the Cheetah Club, if you remember the Cheetah, out on mm -hmm. Navy Street. Mm -hmm. Big place, held 6,000 people. And we'd go on, in two minutes, they'd be gone. <laughs> you know, there'd be three people out there who'd say, wow, new record tonight. But the thing was, is the fact that it was like 1968, remember, and people were still doing this. And, and they were still, oh, gee, everything's wonderful. And we weren't like, you know, that's the last thing we stood for. We stood for, you know, fun. And so we'd go out there, and I said, what does it matter? We haven't got anything to lose. Go out there with Alice Cooper, of course. You know, they're going to expect a blonde folk singer. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and they got, you know, they got us, which was totally. And we, like I said, even the hippies hated us. We had no friends at all. And that was, that was the, if you can take that much energy, and it was a good show, it was, a, it was so powerful that they hated to see, think that that was the future, you know. And we liked it, we said, listen, it's just fun, you know. But then how did you turn it around? Did you, did, did, did you tailor it more to them, or did they come around to you and realize that uh, while there were a lot of, quote, gimmicks, end of quote, going on, there was some solid music backing up that, that, well, uh, even, that, even that, at, yeah, that well, even at the show. time, at the time, you know, we didn't even have enough money to buy gimmicks, so we, anything we could find backstage was was part of the show. You know, find a mop. Oh, that'll work. Right. You know? Hey, get a chicken. Get and a yeah, chicken. anything right. that they would throw on stage really was was a was a, a gimmick because nobody did anything at that period. Everybody played a guitar solo for 14 hours. You know, and, oh, that's great. You know, that's wonderful. But this thing showed them. It was it was a flash. It was an uh, and it was an American sort of vehicle. We were talking about the 22 TVs. I pick up almost all my. my let, me, let me tell you something, Alice. I got to do these commercials now. Listen here, Alice. We will, uh, we will continue with Alice Cooper uh, with more conversation and more music right after these announcements. Have you ever wanted to get up on stage and sing a quiet song to match your quiet life? Oh, I do ballads. Sure, I do. There's one song called Dead Babies that we did. It was a... I don't mean... I, <laughs> it was a sweet song. I don't mean was... that one. I was thinking more like... Uh... I like Burt Bacharach. I think Burt Bacharach. Yeah, yeah, elevator music, as they yeah, call I, it. I, I, like, I like, you know, things... Any, anybody that puts time into anything. Like, I can't stand it when they knock movies. They killed the choir boys. You know, every... I like that movie. And I, I thought um, Myra Breckenridge was good, too. You know? Because, you know... I mean, there was something good about it. Now, why do they murder movies like that? That You know, and same with, same with music, you know? It's just the fact that anybody that puts time into anything, I, I appreciate, you know, even if it's awful. We were just talking about Green Acres was a great show. <laughs> Honestly, you know, if you thought about it in the right, Gilligan's Island was a great show. Oh, come on. Well, the, I mean, he, just the theme song, you know, was <laughs> pretty bizarre. <laughs> Frank Duvall, whoever it was. And now here with the theme song from Gilligan's <laughs> Island. No. If I want to entertain my wife, you know, I just sing, uh, da 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 stop it, I'll do anything. <laughs> 22 television sets you have in your house. Yes, what yeah. can you possibly watch on 22? There aren't that many channels. Well, we have, you know, you have cable now. You can watch things from Toledo, you know, if you want to. You can watch cooking shows from Akron. And, and I just really like, I like the fact that it's all moving, and it's, and it's at the same time. All those people are stars. They go home and, you know, yeah, I have my own cooking show. You know, and to their family, right. that's, you know, but the, the thing is, like, you can catch things out of context. School's Out, the song School's Out was our biggest hit, you know. That came out of a Bowery Boys movie. You, you know, you're watching and sort of listening, and, and Sa uh, Muggsy said to Satch, hey, school's out, hits him with his hat. And what he meant was, wise up, in that, you know, context. And, I went, and that struck me. I went, oh, that's, what a great way to say that. Now, I wasn't listening to the rest of the movie, but I caught that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things, you just catch out of context. And I think it's a great pop art, you know, thing. When you watch the 22 sets, 
do you ever just uh, come in on the primetime programs on the networks, or do you go for the things that are on the cable more? The Toledo. Oh, no, no, I watch. I, I like you know the real American things, the totally all American. What people are watching in America, because you know I sort of don't represent what people are watching in America, which is great. You know, uh, for some reason I have the license to to sort of get away with things. You know, which is nice. I thank you all for that. But uh, but if, if that it's that all I'm an all American guy, really. And, you know, and, and TV is. You know, I get accused of being a nationalist when, I, nationalist when I leave America. I go to Europe and I say, boy, it's so inconvenient here. No pizza at 4 in the morning. You know, TV, TV is off at 8 o'clock, you know. I sat in England and watched a two-hour special on soybeans. <laughs> Saturday night at 9 o'clock, that uh, that's what was on. And I sat there and I watched it and I thought something was going to happen, you know. Nothing happened. The next day interviews, I knew everything about soybeans. That's all I talked about. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> But, but it's really the all-American thing. I really, uh, TV is, is a great, is a great thing, you know. After you have finished a road trip and you go back to your home in California, how much do you guard your privacy to keep the outside world away from you and your family for a time? Well, that's, you know, that is important, you know. I mean, I'm on the map, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, what I do is I hire, to keep the image up, I, I rent this big black castle up there and I hire a hundred actors to be like townspeople. You know, so they because they expect people to pitch for kill the monster. You know, <laughs> that keeps the image up, and they, they think I live there. I actually live down the street. No, it's in L.A. Especially, if you're on the map, you don't have any privacy at all. You know. No, you can't just sail into Chasen's and have a oh, quiet dinner because there. I can't are... go anywhere. I really can't. You know, I love going to baseball games and things like that, and I just can't. You know. P Tupperware parties. Well, but what? <laughs> what if you were to maybe? I mean, you could disguise oh, yourself as... A, is on it. I was going to say, you could disguise yourself as a normal-looking person, you know, yeah, and then... one person would say, Hey, Alice! <laughs> you know, and then I'll say, oh, no. And then but, but see, I can't say no when it comes to autographs. I think it's a real compliment for somebody to ask you for your autograph. Mm -hmm. But that's also... Even though you know that in one day or one year, it will be in the wastebasket. Oh, yeah. It's it a matter. great compliment for somebody to say, sure. may I have your autograph? Sure. Well, but the, you Fortunately, know. I'm not able to write, so I, <laughs> you know, I, I conduct that. We, I, the, and the great thing is well, that is like you get a guy that doesn't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want him to know it's, I want it for me. I had a, a Hell's Angel one time, or a great big biker, and he came out and he says, oh, it's for my girlfriend, you know. I said, well, what name do you want? He says, Spike. <laughs> <laughs> and it said Spike on his jacket, too. <laughs> he really foxed me out on that one. But you agree, oh, okay, great. But, you know, that, that is funny. And, and people that also say, it's not for me. I, I, as long as I'm here, I might as well get one, too. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you know it's, I collect autographs. I collect all villain autographs. Like? Uh, I have Bella Lugosi. Um, I have uh, Lon Chaney, Bella Lugosi. I have uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Mm -hmm. I have uh, the Prince Charles, the, who is Jack the Ripper, the Duke of Windsor. Uh, Duke of Windsor, is that right? <laughs> no, they, they actually found out that was... You know, that was the Jack the Ripper. He was next in line to be the king. And he was, you know, he was Jack the Ripper. I think. I know. Mm -hmm. And all the, you know, great villains. I like villains. So, you know. Alice has Have one you? more. <laughs> Alice has one more number for us. And uh, I think I'm correct. It's called Under My Wheels. Yes. Is that correct? If you would get back and get set with your organization, I will give you the introduction. Here, once again, is uh, Alice Cooper. The song is called Under My Wheels.